Welcome back to another personal training talk. For this episode today, Nick and I are absolutely stoked to have this guest on. For today, we have the one and only Kim Desant from KD Fit Life in Haddon Heights, New Jersey. Nick has worked with her a lot and has always speak really highly of her. And having this opportunity to sit down and not only hear how she's established herself, how she's created her business, how she's impacted her community, the care she takes towards her clients, and the way she goes about training and how serious she takes it. All of that led me to find such profound respect towards Kim. And I am so grateful that we had the chance to have her on this podcast. Kim is someone I think we're going to link up with again. And I think this episode is full of a lot of very inspiring aspects of starting a business. We talk a lot about adversity. We talk a lot about having a vision and how visions change sometimes. And we had a lot of really good conversations about the journey of starting a gym and how things can be subject to change within that. So I don't want to spend too much time talking about it. As always, the easiest and the most helpful way to support the growth of our channel is by liking our videos, dropping a comment below, and subscribing to this channel. With no more further ado, enjoy the show. All right. Kim, thank you so much for coming on today. Of course. Um, if we could just here. get right into it, and uh, if you could just tell us a little bit about you, uh, when you started, why you started. Okay, yeah, so I've actually always been into fitness since I was about probably 14 or 15. I've worked out, I've ran, always made fitness a big priority in my life. Um, Did you play any sports? I played softball, I ran track, and I danced. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. Um, my dad was always like, you're the son I never had because <laughs> we would always play football, like not, you know, for a team, but always like just catches yeah. it was me and him, not my brothers. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it was great. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, so I've always like had a huge passion for fitness. I am a single mom. I have two teenage boys. Um, and I worked for corporate America for 22 years and so you didn't get right into the, I did not No, I Right from high school, I jumped right into a job. Wow. Right into a job, had kids. Um, I worked in the city. You know, I traveled back and forth. My kids were in daycare. Um, you know, and I wanted to be able to spend more time with my kids right. eventually. Um, it took a little while to get the ball rolling. I knew, I knew that I would eventually land in fitness someday. I just didn't know where or how it was going to happen. Hmm. Um, so I stuck with the job that paid the bills. You know, I had, like I said, I had to take care of my kids. So I did what I had to do. Um, yeah, you were still working out like while you were working. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would, once they were old enough to be home alone, <laughs> 5 a.m. every day at the gym. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, and I kind of like made it part of their lives also. So, awesome. I mean, they're, they're both very athletic and yeah. like to work out. I worked for corporate America for 22 years, sitting at a desk, and you know, was not fond of it. I was like, I got to get out of here. How am I going to do this? And everything kind of just like fell into place. I really feel like, um, the people like that you meet in life, people that are motivated, people that have the same interest in you, people that are entrepreneurs that have that mindset. i I was very fortunate to have a lot of those type of people in my life to kind of guide me in the right direction and yeah. kind of like motivate me and make me feel like that I was good enough to do this, you know, on my own. It was a process, but I mean, I'm here today. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of in between stuff, but that's still amazing. Yeah. Before I want to hear a little bit more about, especially like starting the business. But before that, I have to ask, is there anything you miss about corporate job, corporate life? Um, no. Ah! No. Nothing. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. No. I was very curious. No. no, I mean, I work in the city, so I miss being, being in, in the, the city, city and like being around, you know, different types of people. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. And just like going out to eat, to lunch, things like that. Yeah. But do I miss sitting in a cubicle and doing paperwork? And can you go get me coffee? No, thank you. Yeah. I'm good. Well, good for you for being yeah. in the position Thank you're in you. now. It's Thank amazing. You. So how long would you say of the uh, your process was coming out of corporate America and then starting 
So there was a little overlap. So in 2017, I officially got my CPT from NASM. Awesome. And I did that while I was working full time. And I would say for about a year, maybe a little over a year, I worked full time and I also worked for several gyms, okay. teaching fitness classes. And while I was doing that, I was trying to build my own name. So I was doing personal training out of my spare bedroom in my house. Respect. Um, trying to like gather people, friends to, ha you know, to kind of like bring their friends to the park so I could do classes at the park. And then I stumbled across um, the place that I'm in now, the location I'm in now. It used to be a dance studio. So I reached out to the girl who owned it. I just wanted to rent two hours a week. She said, sure, come on in. Huh. And it kind of like transpired from there. I mean, there were plenty of days where I had no one show up. Understood. And I would be really upset, you know, like it, it gets to you, you know, you're like, am I ever, is this ever going to take off? Is it, you know, just having people trust you and just building that, you know, that clientele base. Yeah, that community. Yeah. Absolutely. It takes, it takes a long time it does. to do that. And I even, I feel like even to this day, like even this time of year can be slow. Like I feel like yeah. even some classes now where people sometimes, you know, you only get one or two people yeah. and right. it does test your patience, it test does. your willpower a little bit. That's definitely part of this industry. That's yeah. tough. It does. Like it gets into your head, you know, but being from this area and being open for five summers now, it's like, you know what to expect. Yeah. You know, so it's like you try to just, let it go. They'll be back. Mm -hmm. They'll be back. You know. Yeah, absolutely. It's like the seasons. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now, the studio that you started renting out of. Yes. You ended up buying into that. So, what so was her and I. So, it was a dance studio. Um, she was very well into fitness. Also, she was very big into like bodybuilding competitions. Her and her fiance. So, she had like a liking to be part of the business. At that point, it was just me, my LLC. Um, and I was a one man show. So she wanted to step in and help teach some classes. Um, once I started getting a little bit busier and then she was towards the end of her dance season and said, how do you feel if we partner up, become a legit business and we just changed the dance studio into a gym. Wow. And I was like, hell yeah. Now, how I mean, long were you there when I how long were you renting before you About came? six months. Oh, okay. It wow. wasn't very long. Yeah. Was it wasn't quick. long. Yeah. No, um, it, I mean, everything, honestly, once I got in there, everything started to happen pretty quickly. Yeah. It really did. It was quick. Um, you know, and Jess and I had our own strengths and weaknesses together. Um, you know, she, like I said, she was more on, like, the nutrition side of it because of bodybuilding and all of that. And I was more on, like, the... The classes more of like the fitness side of it but we complemented each other really well that's awesome so you know once we decided our so our first name our business name was beauties and barbells fitness which i thought was cute it was yeah. cute yeah. you know it was cute definitely um but then after i'm trying to think it was probably a year and a half into it she got married started to have kids and it was like covid had just happened oh, wow. And she was like, listen, how do you feel about being the sole proprietor? I was like, yes. yes. Like, I love I you, but it. yes, yeah. like, this is it. Now this is like my baby. It's awesome. Yeah. So then, and then it was just like, you know, it was nerve wracking because then that was, I think it was March 20th when that happened. And COVID was right there. a week before that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So in my mind, I'm like, between the two of us, how are we going to survive off of this? We're splitting everything. Yeah. You know, so it was tough. So it wasn't tough because we had made that, that transition. Um, but honestly, like, I feel like when I was able to do things my way, you know, because I had a whole vision. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I got more on the nutrition side of it. Um, I wound up doing a bodybuilding competition once that was just on my bucket list. It's awesome. And I will never do it again. Yeah. But it was such a great experience. I mean, just the dieting itself, the work that you put into it, um, the posing and the walking was like my 
that was my downfall of the whole thing. Yeah, that's Because I, I, I enjoyed everything else. You know, it was yeah. great. But I got on stage and I was like, all I could hear is my coach say, Kim, smile, <laughs> smile. And I was Aww. like, I just want to get off the stage. Oh. This is like not for me. <laughs> but but it but the whole um journey of it yeah so, yeah so yeah. like because i feel like there has there's so much discipline that goes into it and i feel like that's something you're able to relay over to clients exactly like, Listen, like this is something that i've done this is like, it takes a lot of hard work to do this it and does. So you were a representation of that to clients so they, yeah. they probably looked right. at you and that probably brought in business too like wow if like she i can feel do like this, it did yeah She's i feel like it absolutely did because i was i started to like post pictures on my Instagram page, Facebook, yeah. of all of that. Oh, and that really did bring people in. I bet. I mean, when people see that discipline and, you know, commitment, right. they're like, oh, that person can help me, right. yeah. you know? That's awesome. And the fact that you're able to apply it to your body and you know what it does to you and, you know, hopefully you're able to know what it can do for other people. Exactly. So, um, and that was all at the height of COVID, essentially. It was, yeah. So the fact that you're able to go through COVID with your business and like, I feel like you're able to go through anything now. I mean, like, well, that's yeah. what I always say. If I got through COVID, right, yeah. you can get through anything. Yeah, absolutely. You I know? feel like that was a real test um, for a lot of businesses on how you can adapt to times. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Um, I definitely want to ask you because you said something that I really love. You, you mentioned your vision. Um, can we hear a little bit about your initial vision? Yeah. So my vision really was to focus on women, focus on women's, you know, health and wellness mm -hmm. Um, and just make, make women feel confident and like good about themselves. There are so many women that, and we all, all, we all do it. We're like, oh, I'm fat. I, I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like this. And people come into the gym and I would be like, listen, it's not about changing one particular part of your body. You know, it's about, don't, don't think of it. I always wanted people, always wanted women to not think of getting into fitness as I have to lose weight. Yes. I don't want you to have it. Don't think of it like that. I want you to think about getting strong. Get strong. Take time for yourself. Put time aside for you. Put the workouts in. You know, take care of yourself. Yes. Like your, your mental health, yes. your physical health, yes. what you're putting into your body, everything. You know, and all that goes so much further than looking in the mirror saying like, I look good. Yes, or like the scale just going it, down. Yes, and exactly, yeah, the yes. scale going down. And yes. that was another thing, right? The, the scale goes down, but is your body changing? You know, like mm -hmm. there's more to focus on than just losing weight. Yes. You know, like there's muscle mass, there's body fat, there's, you know, like I said, just getting strong. Yeah. You know, like think of it in a positive aspect and not always negative yeah that's amazing i respect that a lot like Thank spreading you. that message i feel like it's very aligned with yeah. what nick and i do and i feel like yeah like you being able to represent that like you doing going back to the competition it's like you, you're able to speak from experience and then not just saying like giving cookie cutter answers you're like listen like it's difficult it's going to be a journey it but is. like if you stick to it you know obviously moderation is a big term thrown around in the yes. industry but at the same time like knowing when to back off and when, and when to push forward at exactly the same time. I want to ask, like, you, you mentioned your, vi in, um, your vision, you know, is it the same now or is it different? Like, if you want to... Yeah, that's a good question for sure. That. Do you okay. want a second to think about that? Yeah. No, no, no. Um, I mean, honestly, I feel like my, my vision hasn't changed that much. I mean, I enjoy training women. Do I like the fact that, like, on the weekends we have guys come in, but they're guys that come with their significant others. So it's like husband and wives, yeah, boyfriend yeah. and girlfriend. It's very rare that we just have a guy come gotcha. in. Gotcha, okay. So, it's, so I still mm -hmm. focus more on women, building them up, making them feel good, confident, strong, healthy. Yeah. Um, but also on the weekends, it's nice because it's like fun. Mm -hmm. It's like you want to work out with your partner, bring them on in. Like yeah. bring, bring them in on the weekends. Yes. You so know? your vision's changed a little bit from a like... A little bit. Yeah, I like that because that like... I feel like that's something to understand is that like visions are subject to change sometimes. A lot yeah. of things are subject to change. Life changes all yeah. the time. I even said to clients a lot, like uh, when we're planning a workout sometimes, it's almost like in football. Like you could call a passing play up the middle, but if you call that play and you see that the defense is right there, you're yeah. not going to just go with the play. No, you're going to, you're going to, yeah, change it and exactly. you're going to adapt. And I feel like that's sometimes a lot of things in life. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like visions certainly apply to that. Yeah. Oh, right. So my, my initial vision was just like focusing on, on women, right? Women. Yeah. Um, but it has evolved to partners. Mm -hmm. I feel like those can be. I love 
but I do, and I love that it. it's so fun to yes, watch them about come to say. together. Yes, because like I have this one couple. Actually, there are two couples that are super cute. They come in and they like the woman. No offense, guys, but she trains with me all the time. Mm-hmm. The women they train all the time, and then their guys come in like I got that. That's easy. That's yeah. easy. And the girls. The girls are when they get there. The girls are doing it, and the guy. I'm like, oh my god, is four. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. And then the girl, then the girlfriend or wife is looking at him like, oh my god, he's so embarrassing. Uh, but then it's become it's fun. It it's is, fun. Yes. And then the guys learn, and then they're like, wow, this is not such a girly gym. Right. Like this. This is actually hard. Yeah. Challenging. Like I respect all of you women. Absolutely. You know. Yes. But it like brings them together too. It's totally something fun. Yes. To do together. You ever do competitions with couples? No, but now I'm going to. I oh, like that. <laughs> yes, yes. That's great. That's a great idea. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. I will, like, going off of that, I'll have female clients who they're like, oh, like my boyfriend, husband, whatever. Um, they say it's easy. I'm, not, I'm like, bring yeah. them in. Bring them, like, in. bring them exactly. in. Exactly. And they do it, and they're like, the female wipes the floor with them. <laughs> yes. It's so, it's so funny. It? I'm like, yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so. Now, when you had your partner and then you eventually started on your own how did you advertise back then and how has that changed currently it's changed a lot so well we we used facebook a lot in the beginning facebook was like our main platform and also mind body so we use the mind body app which i still use i kind of ventured off veered off of using facebook so much um not necessarily because i don't like it I just don't have access to it any longer, uh, but I don't miss it. I'll be honest. I feel like I wasn't gaining any clients and I wasn't, I didn't have like a lot of, um, a lot of traffic in Facebook. Yeah. So I'm very heavy with Instagram and mind body is also like a great platform because when people are looking for fitness classes, a lot of people know to go through mind. Like if you have the mind body yeah. app downloaded, yeah. It brings up all the different gyms, oh, you know. That's awesome. So, you know, if I'm closest or if I'm what they're looking for, mm-hmm. strength and conditioning and, yeah. you know. So you take advantage of that platform. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's just another way of getting your name out there, too. It, yeah, yeah, exactly, smart. yeah. Awesome. Um, but Instagram, I probably could do a little bit better with my social media and marketing. But I will say when I do go, when I am consistent with it, with posting, it sure does bring people in. Mm-hmm. Um, it really does. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. I think social media is really powerful. It is powerful. So with her, it was a different name. It was Beauties and Barbells Fitness. So like I said, it was mostly Facebook, a little bit of Instagram and mind body. And then when we when our, when we parted, I rebranded. So I always had a KD Fit Life LLC when I was working from out of my home. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? This is just me. I'm going to get rid of Beauties and Barbells Fitness. Yeah, bring it back. I hired someone to do the rebranding for me. And I, I'm back to KD Fit Life. That's awesome. It just feels right to me. Yes. You know? I love that. Well, it's you. I mean, KD is here. Yeah. yeah. It is. And Beauties and Barbells was cute. It was cute. But I do feel like it deterred the men from coming in on the weekend. It's fair. It did. Yeah. I, I really do. I That's feel like it did. Fair. That's definitely fair. Because I'm... it was a barbell with like lips on it. Yeah. <laughs> I could just see how, where'd you work out this weekend? Beauties and barbells. Like some, <laughs> yeah, like some gym in Haddon Heights. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say the name. Um, I love what you said about like, it just that's how you feel. Like you knew that that feeling yeah. was real. Like we talk about that a lot. Like just right. kind of trusting that intuition, trusting yes. your gut. So I think that's a huge part of Honestly, like entrepreneurship and how like sometimes you got to almost take that leap and it is a little scary, but again, you're trusting your gut. So I respect that a lot. Thank you. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, obviously with us being independent business owners as well, it's, it's something you, you know, you can stand behind when it gets tough, yes. you know, it's on me right now. It's like, on me. I have to handle this. Whereas when you had the partner, yeah, it could be a little bit of give and take. And but... I, you're absolutely right, Nick. That, I mean, so she was very good at social media and doing like writing up newsletters and putting all that stuff together Mm. that was not my strength my strength was like being in front of everybody Mm -hmm. and like having relationships and being fun and being funny and motivating and she didn't have that personality at all so she we had different roles you know but now i kind of have to do it all myself Mm -hmm. you know being you know a sole 
entrepreneur. Absolutely. Um, a lot of work. It, it land, everything lands on you. Yep. It does. I am lucky. I do have, I do have some help though. There's um, a, a woman who teaches twice a week for me awesome. and she, um, she does my newsletters for me. She'll send out my emails. So I'm very lucky to have her. So she takes a little bit off of my plate. That's awesome. Well, it's gotta be, <clears throat> excuse me. It's gotta be empowering too. Knowing that you have someone who will report to you yeah. and then, you, you know, it puts you in more of a boss situation and you're like, you know, not necessarily like, oh, do this, do no, that. No, because it's, it's like, not like that, no, not but, but it does feel good. Yeah. It like, does. No, like, I mean, I, did this. Yeah. I mean, honestly, working for somebody for 22 years and being the administrative assistant where everybody is like nitpicking, almost like yelling at you every day, like kind of making you do, you know, like tedious little jobs just to keep you busy. I was like, this is not for me. Right. This is not what I was put on this earth to do. Yeah. Like I want to like change people's lives, yeah. you know? And I feel, I felt like a boss. I was like, I want to be a boss. I don't want to answer to anyone else. Right. And that was really hard for me knowing that I was going into this with a business partner in the beginning because I did not want a business partner. Mm. But that was um, like the journey. That was the road you had to take to yeah, get to where and you're I'm at. I'm just going to be honest. Like if she ever sees this, it's fine. But in my mind, I almost like manifested because I wanted the building. I wanted the space that I'm in now. Mm -hmm. And I was like, the only way that I'm going to get this space is if I partner up with her and whatever happens down the road is meant to be. Uh, so I was just like, just do it. You don't want to partner, but yeah. Well, also, intuition. it got your foot in the door of, of being in the industry too because yes. i feel like do you feel like it would have been way more difficult if you just if that if that spot was open one day and you just like all right i'm gonna go into it right now just me like do, do you feel like I, it was kind of a blessing in disguise yes. that you were able to get in the beginning yes yeah. absolutely yeah because getting up and getting started and all that you i mean you both know all the work that it takes to like just get your business opened yeah right yeah, yeah. i mean it, it's a lot of work definitely you know yeah Definitely, definitely. Yeah. It takes a toll on you, too. It does. It really does. Now, was there something from Beauties and Barbells that really helped you stand out amongst everyone else in the industry? And then if there was that one thing, did you relay that into KV Fit Life? Yes. Or have you changed that? I'm going to say yes. It's a big question. Sorry. So, no, no. <laughs> it's a, actually a great question, and I can, I can answer that. Um, so, I feel like what sets me apart from a lot of other group fitness gyms, not so much personal training, because I know that just watching you, like you're all about form, yeah. like form is very important. Um, but I do feel like a lot of group fitness classes, the trainers and instructors are, do not care so much about form. Yes. We've spoken it's, about that on this podcast before. You have? Yes. Many, it, many, times. many times. It, it, I mean, it's about yes. just getting people in the door. Yes. And oh, yes. Yeah. You know, just but filling numbers yeah, getting, you know. for me, that's not it. I mean, for me, it is, I want you to feel like that you are in a personal training session, but in a group fitness class yeah, yeah. and having a good so time doing it. And I will walk around, correct form. If I have to correct your form every single time you're in class, so good. you're going to get it. Like Absolutely. you're going to, you're going to get the feedback. That's your job. I want you to get every single thing out of that 45 minutes. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, yeah. That's like awesome. you're, you're spending money, you're yeah. putting in your time, yeah. you want results. Yeah. You know, I want you to leave here feeling like you're getting results and, you know, you're getting your money's worth, you yeah. know? If you're not, if you're not getting form adjustments, what's the difference between not watching a YouTube video? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. You're I spending mean, I, more money. Yeah, yeah you're spending exactly. more money. You're spending more money. But I see like a lot of, a lot of gyms have packed classes yeah. and the instructors are eh, screaming at them and screaming. And it's like, you can scream all you want. But until you're like next to that person, yeah. getting down with yeah. them, showing them how it's supposed to look, yeah. how it's supposed to feel. They should not, know what they're working. Right. Exactly. Right. Like uh, to me, that's so much more. And I feel like a lot of people haven't given me a chance because I don't have like the, I have a nice facility. I'm not putting it down, but there are a lot of nicer facilities with, you know, newer equipment. You know, they, they yeah. might look a little bit more. Especially some of these corporates, like what they have access yeah, exactly, to. Yeah, totally right, exactly. But I just feel like if they would just give me a chance that they 
would appreciate it and want to stay, yeah. you know? Yes. I feel like some of those classes that will be packed, they have this massive, they're really good at getting new people yeah. in, but yes. they also lose a lot of people. Where That's I feel true. like people who train like you, they come to you and they stay with you they just do. for the quality of they your work. They absolutely do. I respect that. You know, but it is hard. It, we're also in, a, in an industry where it is hard to retain everyone. It is. Because not everybody wants to stay committed to yeah. working out. You know? So you're going to lose people. Yes. Yeah. You know? There's going to be peaks and valleys. But right. I mean, without it, I mean, I was fortunate enough to see one of your classes today and you were like a hawk on everyone. Like you, you were intensely watching their form. I saw you correcting people, which it can, it can be kind of nerve wracking. Like you don't want to embarrass someone, but at the no. same time, you're doing it for their best interest. You're not calling them out. No. But at the same time, you're like, I have to correct you. That's um, the most important thing to me. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I feel like, yeah, there are going to be places that are, they're packed in, they have all the nice shiny equipment, yeah. but there's this one gym that I know gets a lot of business. I'm not going to say the name. Yeah. They have very, very nice equipment and right. they look really, really nice. And I know their classes can get filled up, but it's like, I hear constant, I've had clients that go there to do their personal workouts and they yeah. stop going just because one, it's either way too packed there. Yes. If they do group classes, they are not great by any means. Yeah, right. the class is filled up, but they they know what a good class is. So exactly. Looks can be deceiving. Is, is what trying to get and Just out if you're that. dripping Agreed. in sweat and sore, does not mean you even just got a great workout. It right? doesn't. Like, people don't. Un people do not understand that though. Yeah, definitely. They don't. And there are so many people that come in. They're like, I just want to sweat. I just want to sweat, and I'm like, that's great. You can go for a run, right? Yeah. Like, a go for a run, but you know your your body's not going to change. Yeah just by sweating yeah you know like you you have to like put the real work in you know you have Absolutely. to do it and yeah i mean it's hard to convey that it, to it really sometimes. is it is yeah, we definitely. had this conversation about like the running right yep. like how people just they want to run 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 because they think that they're going to lose weight and they're going to yeah. look good and but your body's not changing yeah you know totally it's good for you don't get me wrong i'm not knocking it but in moderation yeah and, and you know? for the risks that come that come with it for a lot of populations and then what they get out of it yes. it's not worth it there's right. a more efficient route to take like strength training yes yeah and that's it i feel like that's the thing with strength training is that everybody's going to be different everybody's going to have some sort of weakness that is not going to be the same to each person so right. and i feel like that's what makes you better at being a personal trainer, being a group instructor, is that you can deal with different types of people. It's not just the same people no. across the board. Like you can, you'll have all, all different all, levels. Exactly. All different. Yeah. That's why when they walk in in the morning and they're like, "What kind of weights do I need?" And I'm like, "Okay, this is what we're doing. I'm not going to tell you what to grab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is what we're doing. Get." what you think works for you and then as we go if i'm like you can adjust. someone's in the back going like this i'm like okay that's way too easy for you yeah, like yeah. we're gonna we're gonna increase the weights here or even lower them because yeah. i have a lot of people that think that you know i can go super heavy and then it just compromises their form yeah, but totally. they don't realize that yep. so to have someone tell them that you know yep Absolutely. I hate to generalize, but Nick and I have talked about this before. Usually mm -hmm. I feel like it's males where they'll, they'll want to just grab the heaviest weights. They'll, it's like you yeah. did the bicep curls. A lot of times they'll grab the weights and they'll curl it, go halfway down, curl halfway. it again. Yeah. It's like, yeah. let's train those arms all the way down. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then it's like a realization. I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm like, what? I mean, especially if you're doing a group class too, because if you're, if you're stacking the exercises, you're going to be fatigued much faster. So yes. But trying to explain mm -hmm. that to someone. It's difficult, but at the same time, it just further proves that you're good at what you do because you're like, listen, like I know you can do this individually, right. but with your, if you're doing X, Y, and Z all together, pull back a little yes. bit and yeah. focus on what you're doing. Don't just try and like, I'll have clients that if I'm like, all right, we're going to do 10 of this and they knock out 10, drop the weights. I'm like, pick them back up. That was right. way too easy. We're going to do a few more, you know, and then Absolutely. on the next set, increase, yeah, increase yep. the weight or what, whatever it may be, but it, you're, you're doing something specific and you want to make sure that they're getting the most out of absolutely whatever program they otherwise like them. why bother right, right? Yeah. why bother yeah absolutely yeah. Exactly. Well, it's so awesome to have you on this podcast because you can tell yeah. that your beliefs are totally aligned with ours and um, I love that. even anthony that we've had on matt that we have had on yeah. like it's so cool to hear kim say these things <laughs> i know, you know? I, and it's cool it's really nice too because there's things that that you've done that i haven't either gotten to yet or that I, that I just personally haven't done, but there's also things that you do do. And it's nice to say like, oh, it's nice to hear. Like, I know we've talked for, for hours about things that we do similar, 
So being able to hear that from you too, it's like, you know, we're all in this together at a certain point. It's like, it's a massive industry it so is. to listen to other people that you respect in the industry and you do similar things. It's, it's very, very empowering. It is. It's inspiring. It really yeah. is sure. inspiring. Yeah. And I do love having you at the gym, just yeah. so you know. Aww. No, it's great. It really I mean, is. Nick is like, he's so happy all the time. Yeah. Always smiling. You're great. You're amazing at what you do. I appreciate all of your people are so, they're all so nice. Oh, I said that it's too. Great. Like, it's great. I've so had great. like six people come in here and try to teach classes and I was like, I'm really picky. Kind of like what we talked about. Yeah. Like how like, I'm not going to put my clients in front of someone I don't trust. Exactly. Nick is someone where I'm like, a hundred percent, right? Everyone goes yes. to Nick. Like, <laughs> It's, and it's, I love awesome. that. And like you support Nick and you encourage them to go to his classes yeah. because you know that they're in good hands. Yeah. And, and, and in my opinion, in all reality, even if I had a client and then that client work, went to one of Nick's classes yeah. and then they felt like Nick was a better fit for them. Do it. Do like, it. Do what's best. For, like, do it. Exactly. I think trainers get like very defensive sometimes. And I feel like that is a very toxic aspect of the industry. Um, I remember when I first got a job at a corporate gym there were these rumors going around that the one trainer was taking out another trainer's clients in hopes to try to steal them. Mm. It's just like, put that effort towards training and you'll yes. get that right. client, it's, you know? Yes. <laughs> but exactly. It's also I love that. Knowing that like, if you feel, and that's the thing is that you have, it's nothing personal because it's at the end of the day, it's business and you want the best for the client. So it's like, if, like you said, if someone felt like they were more comfortable with me and you floated than the mate, same thing. If someone yeah. felt more comfortable with you or Kim, like, yeah. I was like, absolutely go. Same. Like it's not, it it shouldn't be competitive to the point where I have to be at the top. No. Because, no. And I know Josh and I have talked about this, but I felt in the very beginning that I, I have to be by myself. Like it has to be me. I yeah. can do this by myself. But the more I realized like being able to rent from, I'm very fortunate to have met you two and be able to rent from you two and, and work with you guys. Um, but knowing that we're building each other up because totally there's no are. point to try and push everyone away and no. you try and get to the top because why? why? Why do you want to be alone at the top? Like bring everyone you up don't. with you. And, but in the beginning, in the very beginning of the journey, you're right. You feel like you have to be alone. Yeah. You know, like you, I, I can do this myself. Yeah, definitely. You know, like you don't want to share your clients in the beginning, yep. you know, but also I feel like as you grow, you know, obviously older, but you know, in the, in the industry, like you realize though, that there are so many people out there yeah. that, you know, that are looking for trainers and not everybody's going to fit for you. Not everybody that comes in the door has like a great relationship with me. Yep. You know, most, I mean, most do, yep. but there, there are a few that it just, it's just not compatible. It, it isn't. And that's okay. Absolutely. That's okay. That's the biggest struggle. I've not, well, one of the biggest struggles I've learned in, in owning the business is, one, getting used to rejection, because I feel like that's yeah. a massive part of, of the industry, yeah. but also knowing that it's okay not to get somebody on the first try. Because right. one, I know we've definitely talked about this, that it might not be the wrong, wrong time, wrong place. Yes. But then yes. you circle yes. back in like a few months and yes. it's like, all right, I'm ready. Like, yes. let's yes. do it this time. Or like, you know, you've already met each other before. Yep. And then they come back around. It's right. like, hey, like, let's rekindle the flame. Like, yes. Yeah. I, and I feel like there are like those... I even think back to when I worked at corporate gyms, like the successful trainers were the ones that would just walk around and treat people like people. And like, you would just say, how's it going? And leave it at that. Yeah. Yes. The not successful trainers would be the ones like, Hey, let me make an adjustment on your work. Hey, you want a free session with like, that's when you're not being genuine and that's no. where you're not going to be successful. Yeah. You know? right. So I totally agree with what you're yes. saying. Yeah, absolutely. People, people do like that connection and relationship. I feel like building a relationship with all of your clients, you know, even like if it's in a class setting or a one-on-one, -on -one, I do think that goes such a long way. And when it's genuine, yes. people know that. Yes. Absolutely. Know. Yeah. Uh, especially with working out too, it's such a, a, like a thing that is meditative for a lot of people. It's therapeutic for a lot of people. Yeah. So I feel like you do develop a really good relationship with your trainer yeah. a lot. Yeah. You do. Well, and and it, it comes back to the personal aspect. It's personal training. And it's like, right. if, they, if true, they are coming to see you, like you are the reason that they're coming. Yes. It's like, yes, they respect what you do, but again, that's who you are. So right. it's like, that's what keeps them coming back. It's so. true. I, that was like one of the best pieces of advice I got when I first started training was there was a, a, a trainer who I worked with and he, he was in the industry 10, 15 years at that point. He's like, be prepared that you, these clients will probably see you more, more than their family sometimes. 
because if they're at work all day and then they come right to you and then they come home and have very little time with their family, they're, so they're going to be seeing you more than, yeah. than their family. So he's like, know that you are going to be a brick wall some days and they're just going to start throwing stuff off mm -hmm. of you. And he's like, know that it's not personal. It is a therapy session. Like, it is. People are really going to be opening up to you and just how you handle it is going to dictate a lot of different things. So I, I feel like that's what like sets apart like a good trainer though. You know, when someone that isn't fully invested, yeah. Yeah. you know. I feel like a big piece of that is listening. Like being it is. a good listener. Yeah, absolutely. it really is. Yeah. Now, five years ago, you were, so you're going into your fifth year, into your sixth year? Um, so June 23rd was my fifth year. Wow, well, congrats. Yes. Congratulations. Thank that's you. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. So five years ago, you were just starting. I was just starting, yeah. Okay. Wow. So I was just starting. I mean, like I said, I was working out of my house. Just started teaching, like, in the gym, well, the dance studio, uh, a couple hours a week out at the park in Haddon Heights. Yep. You know, so that that's where it started. I am where I am today. I feel pretty established. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, as Nick knows, like, the gym is under construction. I'm trying to... Take it to the next level. Well, going off of that, I don't think I've ever seen anyone handle it as well as you do. Like with, you. with how much that goes on, with people coming in and out, like you, you just you just keep the ball rolling and you don't let it get to you. And it, it was definitely because I saw, I was fortunate enough to see it before the construction yeah, started. So there were. there was some some stuff that was moved around and everything, but you know you're handling it it's, very very thank well. Thank you. Yeah. It's a little messy, <laughs> but I mean it. I don't have. I don't have control over construction yeah. and what's yeah, happening. Yeah. So I'm like, we just got to roll with Respect. it. Nick and Listen, I not... we just got to do it. Yeah. yeah. You know, we make do with the space we have. Respect that. And, yeah. you know, I would like to get some new equipment. I would like to expand in the basement. We're getting some infrared saunas in. That's awesome. So we have a lot going on. We That's do. Great. So my goal is to have this Haddon Heights location completely up running the way that I want it to be by next summer, yeah. like a hundred percent. And then I would like to open up a second location, but more so for group fitness classes. So it wouldn't be, I wouldn't be there. Right. I would hire someone to manage it. Yeah. Do you want that in Haddon Heights? Or I don't, I want it in a totally different town. So that's an another thing. So I'm thinking like more towards like Gloucester Township area. Right. Awesome. Because I feel like Marlton, Cherry Hill, Haddonfield were so saturated. Yep. Mm -hmm with you know personal training gyms yeah. and group fitness yeah you go, you go to, so nice you too. go to gloucester township and there's like nothing yeah there's, it's a nice area too it, it, i mean it, it isn't bad there are it's very there are tons of people yeah. <laughs> like there are a lot of people there yeah. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you have like the big change ins you have like planet fitness giant fitness yeah. but you don't have anything like this yeah so that's that's my next that's step. awesome. Nick and I in the last episode talked about like adversity and how like true character is who you are in adversity. And it's just really cool to hear like how you're handling the adversity and the construction you're dealing with. You're just like, well, I can't control it's... it. Like, but I, that's definitely know. no coincidence why you're successful. Like you have a good mindset. Yeah. So I respect that a lot. When I feel like when it rains, it pours, like everything started, you know, the construction started. <laughs> Literally. Back, no pun intended. Yeah. Like it, it, all the construction was happening in the back. And then the 4th of July storm came. And I come in the one day and the whole front is ripped up. I'm, I'm like, Kim, what happened? She ended up, it flooded in. And so like she's dealing with everything in the back and it's like now she's got to deal with everything in the front. And again, like I said, she handled it very well. Like, yes, it's very stressful, but she's like, what am I going to do? You know? I can't yeah. close. Right. But, no, and exactly. I wouldn't. And I wouldn't. You know, it's like we have to work around it right yeah. now. But eventually, and like you have said to me even, it's all going to be worth it. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it's all going to be worth it. Yeah. I, like there's you know i have to wait for them to finish yeah. Yeah. their part before i can do anything that i want to do yeah so it's like in times like this you lean on that vision that yeah. vision you see so clearly yeah exactly and also yep. with, with your clients like that's further proving that they're there for you like they, with all this going on they're like they oh no what happened like they want to know what happened they do. Like, but then it's not like that's going to shoot them away no they're, they're going to be there for you they are and it's actually nice somebody said to me the other morning I was like, I'm so, I did have like a little meltdown. I was like, I'm so tired of this floor looking like this. Like, I just got to get the rubber put down. It was just like a bad morning. And the one girl was like, we're not here because of the way your gym looks. 
Like, we're here for you. Aww. And I was like, oh, okay, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> like, like, I, like, I needed to hear yeah. that. You know, like, at that moment, I needed that because I was like, That's awesome. That is awesome. Having a little meltdown that yeah. day. Understandably so. so. You know? That's cool that your client could be there for you like yeah. that. That's awesome. But that's also, got, like we've mentioned before, like when you're when you're there for personal training or doing group classes, like it's not about, like, unfortunately, it's not about us. It's not about us. And like it's all about them. So, and I know I have clients that they'll ask me, like, they, like what, and we went into the last episode with stuff with my dad. Like they'll come in like, hey, how's he doing? And like they... I try to make it as not about me as yeah, possible, yeah. and I'm like, oh, you know, like good, good and bad days, and then like they'll want to know more, and I'm like, ooh, I'm like, I'll make this about me right Which now, is nice, like, though, it, it is. because if they're asking, they genuinely care, exactly. and they want to know. Exactly, you know? Yeah. and I feel like that's what is so important about building your community, is yes. that it's, it, you're a family, like you're going to you see are. these people oh. a lot, and it's like the fact that you can have these personal conversations with them, and the fact that they, that one client said to you, like, I want to what it looks like we're here for you i'm like if anything it makes you you better because you're able to work around certain things like being at smart bodies uh with anthony like at times it can get kind of tight in there which is fine which is great like that it's great business for him and i'll I'll have my station set up and i'm used to working in uh like i don't have to jump around from machine to machine or whatever so i feel like it's helped uh me and Kelsey, because I know Kelsey used to have, and I kind of feel bad at times. No. So I feel like with Kelsey, she, you know, we split our, our space. Which is great. And yeah. I feel like when she's there, like I just go, I just go into my little section and I do what I need to do. And it's still like, I, I don't have to change the routine at all. No, so and I, I love that about you. Like you are very adaptable. Yeah. Like you really are. Like you, you started when the gym was intact, you know? Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was like all the all that equipment in the back was moved up yeah. and our personal training space w- became like half the size that it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's you, Kelsey, myself, mm-hmm. you know, and then sometimes it's the three of us training yeah. and Elise is teaching, yeah. you know, so, but I feel like we all respect each other. Yeah. We work well together. Well, and there's communication too. Yeah. Like if awesome. I'm not doing something, Kelsey will be like, hey, are you using this? I'm like, no, that's you. And I'll get, I'll, I'll move something, whatever. Yeah. And it just like increases... Uh, like I said, the communication, but how well you're able to work in a pinch, you know? Exactly. So it's good. It's tough, like, but, you know. And, like, think of, like, new, like moves or exercises to even put together right. in, like, a small space, like, with what you have mm-hmm. right there. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes that's challenging, fly, but it Definitely. does. Yeah. It does. It's again, that's a sharp. to adapt. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely, without a doubt. And I feel like, you know, we've been fortunate enough that, you know, when I'm here, you're not. When you're here, I'm not. So you, but, we have you know, the whole space to ourselves, which is great. But I feel like if there ever was, and, you know, we're decent with our communication and, you know, not being, not being on top of each other, but like when you are coming out and I'm coming in, like there, it's a smooth transition. Yeah. Like it, we've never had a hiccup before. Definitely. And I, I feel like it's, I was hanging know. out with uh, Eric yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he's, oh, he's too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very fun session with the both of them. You can, how long have you guys been working together? Well, I started training his mom, probably seven or eight years ago wow so you can tell this is like family it was a very great session <laughs> i've been training eric on and off now for probably three or four years and it, it's just funny because like he comes in and it's just like you know we, we should talk to each other and it's yeah great. And i'm like i'm like oh, how are you doing this I'm like, yeah I'm but like, he also knew like everything he already knew everything like, right x y and z and he's already just started yeah doing he would start it. the That's warm-up great. but i'm we're, we're able to catch up and then eric's getting he's starting his warm-up he's if anything getting more time in his in his session because you know we were starting at what was it 3 30 we were like five minutes early so you and i are able to catch up eric's already starting his workout so he's already getting more yeah. like by the time his session actually starts he's nope. getting more he's already warmed session. up yes. exactly he's ready to go so let me think of how to say this so if you, the piece of advice that you would give yourself when you first started at beauties and barbells mm-hmm. and also when you were still in corporate america and you can take that in any order you want <sighs> Well, I mean, I will say that in the beginning, I mean, I did doubt myself a lot. I was really scared. I was scared to like take coming the, out of corporate America. coming out of corporate America, doing my own thing. Like I knew that that was what I was meant to do and, and everything. But you know, I had two little kids, and I did, I did financially, I did well where I was. So, I mean, I. <clears throat> I was really, I was scared. I was really nervous. Um, I cut back on my expenses. I got rid of my BMW 
drove my dad's pickup truck for yeah. a couple of years. I was like, got to do what you got to do. Absolutely. Um, but I just wish that I, I do feel like I should have been a little bit more sure of myself and a little bit more confident. I mean, I know it's, it's it was a scary transition. So being nervous is, is natural. It's a normal feeling. But um, I do wish that I would have like done it a little bit sooner and had the confidence to do it a little bit sooner than I did. Although everything does happen for a reason, right? Totally I feel does. like timing, timing is everything in life. I feel like timing yeah. is everything. Um, maybe had you not, maybe had you started earlier, maybe you wouldn't have had that opportunity to be in that night. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. exactly. Yeah, exactly. You're right. I second guessed a lot of things. Yeah. It's a very human thing to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did have one person in my life that I will, I should give like a lot of credit to. And it was my son's wrestling coach. He's 14 years younger than me. Great. One of the greatest people I've ever met in my entire life. Um, he's, Obviously, he's much younger than me, super successful. But at the time, he was 21. And he was the one that gave me a lot of my motivation and the push to just do it yeah. a lot. Wow. Yeah. And it was nice to have someone like that and someone so young. And, like, he already was, like, an entrepreneur at 21 years old. You know, so, like, having somebody to, like, just reassure you, like, having the right people in your corner having positive people, yeah. you know, um, I will say, and this is like going off on a tangent, but I do think it's important for people to know this, that when you, when you have a dream and you have a goal and you have people in your life that are not healthy, they're not healthy for you, whether it's, they don't make you feel good or they're putting you in a bad situation or they're drinking too much or there's drugs involved, like anything, it is so hard to get people out of your life that you may care about but are not good for you. That is the first step to success is getting those people out of your life, no matter how hard it is. Yeah, definitely. Getting that out of your life because it, then it allows you to focus on so much positive yeah. and bringing good into your life. You know, but you don't have room for the good if you're filled with all this toxic. Yes. You know, it's like getting all of that out. And that was another thing because I did go through a little hiccup maybe six months ago, you know, where I wasn't doing everything that I should have been doing at the gym. Like I slacked a little bit, but I was just like, felt like I wasn't in a good place. And I'm like, this person, this person, this person, they have to go. Yeah. I'm done. Yes. No matter how hard it was hard, yeah. but I spent a lot of, a lot of time being up, you know, feeling like I was in a bad place and I couldn't, I, it was like a roadblock for me. I couldn't yeah. move forward in my business. I couldn't do the things I wanted to do because I felt like all of my energy and all of my time was just being sad and figuring out how I was going to like fix this personal problem with someone. Yeah. You don't need that. You don't need it. No. You ever heard, uh, have you ever heard the quote, uh, you are an average of the five people you spend the most time around? No, but I like that. Yeah, I feel like that applies I like, so much I love that. to what you're saying. Like it, it's almost as like that energy is contagious a bit. It is and so like, contagious. If you just take a look at the people you're surrounding yourself yeah. by, oftentimes you subconsciously don't even realize that they're rubbing off. Yeah. But you don't realize that, and that's like that right there is like the biggest piece of advice that I would give anyone, no matter what you want to do, whether you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be a doctor, whatever whatever your dreams are. You know, it's like honestly surround yourself with good people get the negative out of your life yeah that's great advice that's amazing it's tough because you might see it but you ignore it you do because, ignore it because it's like okay but if i if i gotta cut ties with this that everything it's gonna it's gonna flip your world upside down and it's it going does. to make things difficult but the fact that you were you were able to do that it's i mean obviously for the better it sounds like it was like a positive choice it's a lot of um like self healing and like I mean, I went on like this retreat last, geez, when was it? October maybe, which really opened my mind up to a lot of, just a lot of, you know, being more positive and like being kind to myself and not allowing, you know, like I said, like negative people in your life to like bring you down, yeah. Yeah. suck the life and energy out of you. 
No, thank you. And it's tough because given the situation, like to somebody on the outside mm -hmm. who doesn't necessarily understand the full scope of what's happening, you may you may look like the bad person. Oh, yeah, I probably did. But at the same time, you know your purpose. You you exactly. know what's happening with whatever the situation is. And you, you're in charge of making that Right. Decision. And I knew it was best for me, my family, and my business. Yeah. And that's what all, you know, you put it in perspective and... I find it interesting that you said like you found the answer while you're on a retreat because we, we were talking like we talk a lot about how when we work out it brings clarity and i'm a big believer that like when we have uh issues whether it's mental health or even life issues oftentimes it's not people externally that are going to give us the answer mm -hmm. we usually we have do. the answer but it's clarity usually that we need and yeah. like oftentimes there's fog or there's people around us that like cloud that clarity yes. and then that's where you don't get the answer so I respect you even like took the time, not only the time, you put yourself in an environment to help you kind of get the answers. Oh, yeah, God. that was life changing, actually. That's, I respect that a lot. That's awesome. So unfortunately, about an hour into the recording, it just completely stopped recording. Um, it looked like my phone was dead, but then I actually was able to turn it back on and there was still some battery. So if you guys want to come at Apple for that one, Nick and I would really appreciate that. So unfortunately, you guys aren't going to get to see the question that we did. So I guess that is another reason as to why we'll just have to have Kim come on back on the podcast and then we'll answer two questions. Thanks again, Kim, for joining us. Hope you guys enjoyed. How long have we been going? 24. Wow. See? Flies by, doesn't it? That was fast. <laughs> yeah. It was You're fun. Awesome. You've been it was great. really fun. All good. That's yeah, awesome. I love this. Good.